What's up everybody? This is the breakdown strategy, whatever you want to call it, video for the December 7th Thursday slate. Four games, um, late start tonight. Uh, first tip is at 8 o'clock, so we've got a little bit of extra time. Um, what that means for me is that I can eat a functional dinner that I cooked for myself, which I'm happy about. I would have loved to have cooked for the wife, but... She is at a Christmas party tonight, um, so it's just going to be a lot of me watching basketball and, um, you know, probably hemorrhaging money playing fantasy basketball. So, if that sounds like a recipe for a good time, join me on this journey. I'd be happy to have you. Um, first game we're going to look at is Sixers-Lakers. Sixers, 114.25 implied total. They are the number one team in implied points tonight. They're, what is that, seven and a half point favorites at home against the Lake Show. Um, some fun games. It's a shame, like, you know, Sixers-Lakers is what it is. The Sixers should hammer them, but it's a fun game. You get the Lonzo dynamic. Obviously, the Sixers are awesome. Um, you know, Suns Wizards, it's a shame that Booker is out. It would have been fun to see him and Beal go at it. Um, Nets Thunder is just bad. Jazz Rockets is an interesting game. Um, I'd like to see if Hood comes back. I'm projecting him in right now, but that could be a fun game. The Rockets going up against the Jazz D. I'm intrigued. Anyway. Taking a look at the Sixers, um, right now I have TJ McConnell back in the lineup, projected for 23 minutes, but you know we're going to need to take a look at everybody here with this being a four-game slate and them being number one. So let me grab the Sixers stats. For those of you that did not watch my recap video for last night, I put up 346 fantasy points. Calm down. Um, I know that sounds like it's a really awesome night, and you're probably thinking, hey, Josh, how much money did you win? Um, 346 is usually really good. That's probably a really great night. Nope. Down money. Probably down 50%. Um, cut line was nuts, and all the chalk hit. So shout out to Zebo over Tatum. That one's going to hurt me. What was I doing? Yep, already forgetting. Didn't even do the first game, and I've already forgot what I was doing. Never fails. Alrighty. Let's do this. So. I'm interested in Simmons. I'm interested in Embiid. I'm interested across the board. <coughs> I don't mind too much about those stats for this particular game. So, let's think about it. Embiid needs 54 for value. Which he has done once in his last six. Um, he did put up 50 here, so you wouldn't be too bummed about it. I don't see any reason why Embiid wouldn't feast on the Lakers. Um, what else we got? Ben Simmons, 10-5, so 52.5, which he has done twice in his last six, almost three times. Um, I don't really know who guards Ben Simmons. <laughs> Probably... <clears throat> I don't know, like Corey Brewer for a lot of it. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I still like I like Simmons as well. Simmons not as much. I prefer Embiid to Simmons if I had to pick one of the two. Bobby Covington needs 33. She got there once in the in the 49 point outburst, but hasn't gotten there otherwise. Doesn't feel like the best Covington night. 
And then uh, Redick needing 27-ish. It's been all over it. I think Redick might sneakily be in play here. Yeah, I'm willing to take a look at Redick. I don't think he's going to pop too much for me, but, you know, you never know. I'll take a look at the Lakers. Lakers, 106.75 implied total, uh, tied for fourth. So, mid-tier. Um, Sixers get to take an up-close-and-personal look to uh, Lonzo. Be interesting if Lonzo was on the Sixers right now instead of Fultz. Okay, so Brandon Ingram is interesting. Lonzo, KCP, and then I don't know, maybe maybe Kuzma. Lonzo, sixty six hundred. That's thirty three fantasy points. He's done that. Twice in his last six, almost three. Nothing good coming out of the last one. Um, I'm okay with Lonzo. KCP needs 28. Been there three times in his last six. Almost four. No way am I typing that. This is going to be a big game for uh, fantasy, I think. <coughs> I'm going to have some trouble picking out of this um, trifecta. It seems like Kuzma is probably the safest bet. But then again, who knows? What does he need? 25, 26, 27. What has his salary done since everybody came back? Okay, so he's, he's back down into the fives. I would have liked him at five again, but I feel like I need to take a look here. It's going to be... That should be the most popular game. Although Suns Wizards is going to have some interesting, well, Suns at least are going to be interesting because of uh, Booker being out. So let's load them up now. So Phoenix has a 104 implied total, is six out of eight. Tonight they are seven, seven and a half point underdogs at home to the Wizards. And the Suns will be without Devin Booker for like two to three weeks. Which is a shame because he's really the only thing of redeeming quality on the team. Uh, Washington. So I probably don't even need to look much further, but TJ Warren is going to have all that he can handle tonight. Salary seems high. Yeah, holy shit. Well, in anticipation of this, it appears that they jumped TJ Warren's salary up to 8100 so that should that should be interesting. He needs 40 fantasy points to hit value. I think TJ Warren's the fade tonight. Yeah. I'm going to need to take a look at... Oh, they even bumped Tyler Eulis up. He's at 4,900 now. So Tyler Eulis for, is, looks great on DK. Fire that up for sure. I think that I'm going to avoid TJ Warren because of that salary jump. He looks good on DK, 6,500. But the jump to 8,100 is... That's ridiculous. Troy Daniels at 3,700. Um, 
I think sort of needs to happen. And I think that Tyler Eulis has to be looked at just because of the additional minutes he should get. I don't really feel comfortable with Josh Jackson. <laughs> but he might end up being in play. He's got really good value. Needs 23. Yeah, it's not going to be for me. At least not yet. And we'll hop to the Wiz. Wizards, 111.5 implied total. That is second on the night. We've got Bradley Beal coming back off of his monster game. Salary looks to be uh, back up as well. Go up a couple hundred. Yeah, up a thousand. Eat shit, Fandle. <laughs> Come on now. Up a thousand after that game. After playing like straight gutter water. Ugh. Sons of bitches. He barely hit that same number in this past three games, and they're gonna have the nerve to up that back up to 8,600. Go fuck yourselves. Well, you know, I gotta look at everything anyway. They could, the Wizards could be primed to blow their doors off. I just want John Wall to come back. It's not fun when good, like, when stars are hurt. I don't want Booker out. I just want to see him play. I don't want John Wall to be out. I want to watch him play. I don't want to watch 18 minutes of Tim Frazier. Give me a break. All right, so you got to look at Beal even though I don't want to. Everybody's in play for the Wiz. Yeah. Um, I'm going to avoid the point guards because I'm not really sure where to go there. I could see Tim Frazier on DK. So Beal at 8,600 means he needs 43, which Jesus. Obviously he did it in his last one, and obviously he didn't do it for a while before that. Clearly he can get there. The interesting part of it all is... The Suns are probably better defensively to guard Beal with Booker out because, I mean, Booker is a turnstile on defense. He is atrocious. So, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Beal, 43. I'm going to avoid that for right now. But I have a feeling he's going to be pretty heavily owned. That price jump is scary. Otto Porter, 7,100. Is he up too? That seems... Uh, no, I feel like he might... Have, yeah, he's up a little. Yeah, he's pretty neutral. Porter needs 35. He's done it twice in his last seven. And I'm going to be more interested in Porter. I could see that being good. You know, TJ Warren's going to have his hands full on offense. Might not be playing as much, you know, defensively. And I would expect Porter to be able to roast Jackson if he had to guard him. So take a look at Ubre too. 5,300, so he needs 25. Minutes have ticked up a little bit for Ubre. He's hit 30 in a couple, so yeah, I, I think I'd probably end up with Ubre over Porter, but we'll see. Keith at 48. Um, oh, revenge game. Markeith Moore's revenge game in Phoenix? Or, no, it's at home. Nope, it's in Phoenix. Shit.
Uh, that seems forced. Nah, it's probably good value. They're, they should be fine tonight. And then Gortat. Tyson Chandler should be playing. It should be Len that sits tonight. That could change if anybody's hurt. Um, Gortat at 48. Yeah, he's been playing pretty well his last three. It's just his minutes have been down. Uh, no, I'm going to fade Gortat. Off to uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn is... Um, I don't know. We'll save this just in case. It scares the living shit out of me whenever there's an error. So Brooklyn, 103.75 implied total. They are 7.5 point favorites. 7.5 point underdogs. At home against the Thunder. I don't really like Brooklyn all that off, all that much. They're um, not very good. I don't. It's weird. I don't really like teams with their color scheme. I've never enjoyed watching like the Raiders play football or the Nets. What other like what other teams have that sort of color scheme? I don't know. Like Blacks and Grad. I don't. Know, I never get there. I don't like the Nets, even when they're good. Um, okay, so at the very least, the Thunder are going to give up some threes. So we're taking peeks at Damari Carroll, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Crab. Maybe Joe Harris as a down the ballot guy. Nobody immediately jumps out. I don't like Rondé Hollis Jefferson, but on DK. He's twenty. He's two thousand dollars cheaper on DK, so he's he's in play on DK. Um, let's look at Dinwiddie first. Seventy two hundred. That's thirty six. He's done it twice. Um, and he'll have Russ. He's been playing well. Um. Seventh implied total. That's probably not for me. Damari Carroll at fifty-eight hundred. So twenty, twenty-nine. That feels pretty safe. Um, he'll probably have the ability to shoot a bunch of threes. I just gotta hope they fall. Joe Harris at thirty-eight hundred. It's a. It could be a Joe Harris game. Um, I would want some more injuries before I rolled him out. And then who was the other one? Oh, Crab. I've got him at twenty nine minutes. He's at forty eight hundred on Fanduel. He hasn't been very good this year, has he? Not really. Needs twenty four. Hasn't been good. But that profile fits. I can entertain it, but he's not going to pop up. Okay, C. It's really weird matchups. So 111.25 implied total, that is third on the night. We know what we're looking at here. It's basically four guys. There's not much to uh, not much to think about. So I'm assuming Russ is just going to be like auto owned. Yeah. Russ is going to be owned without question, probably Embiid as well. Should be another fun night in cash. Sign me up for that 350 cut line that I can't hit. So bitter. Okay. So 
Let's just get Ross down now. Not enough other point guards out there to not have him. Seems like a great spot for Mello as someone that lives in the mid range. And I think this will be the spot where I'm off of Paul George. Salary is down though, 300. Mello went up 100. What did Westbrook do? Oh, to fucking 11.5, Jesus. Yeah, I think Russ and Mello are the spots. And then Adams. I'm good. Although, could be in line for a decent one. What does he need? 35. He's been good his last. Oh, he's been really good. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look at Steven Adams. Steven Adams will be who I'll end up with if I somehow need to move off of Embiid, but I doubt it. There's not enough salary at other positions for that to end up coming into play, I don't think. And finally, Utah. 101.25 implied total. Last on the night, they play the Rockets, which, whew, that's going to be an interesting game, man. I won't see it because it starts too late. I need to somehow live on the West Coast. Got to talk to the old wife, make this easier for DFS purposes. If I can get a 4 p.m. lock, that sounds like it would be really fun. Move to Oregon or Washington or something. I feel like I'd do well in Portland. What the hell am I doing? Uh, Utah. A tale of two teams here, although the Jazz offense has been rolling. Ewing theory potential and uh, Gordon Hayward being gone. Is my coffee gone? Just about. Shit, bad copy. Okay, so you would assume that Donovan Mitchell is just going to bomb, but what is his salary? 7500 is so damn much. I don't trust Gobert yet. I could see this being an interesting Ricky Rubio game. How has Ricky Rubio traditionally done against Chris Paul? Like I expect him to get minutes, you know? Shit, I might not like anything on the Jazz. Um, I just I wish Gobert was healthier. He needs thirty eight, thirty seven to hit value. It seems like a stretch, especially from the worst. Um, implied total. Right. I mean, I guess I need to look at Donovan Mitchell at like 3,700 or whatever. Or 37 fantasy points. Because he's going to gun the living shit out of the ball. Yeah, I think Donovan Mitchell is the only guy I'll look at. He could have some weird ass game. Look, look, how many shots does he normally take? Yeah, it's like 22, 25. 
I mean, he could be... It wouldn't shock me if he went 7 for 27 or something crazy tonight. Cause that dude's got... He's got no conscience. He'll go for it. Let's look at the Rockets now. Who are probably going to be a little bit more interesting. Since they're... Obviously offensive inclined and good. No, Huo is not a team. Houston. I write check. 106.75 implied total. Tied for fourth. Um, we know where our bread's buttered here. Ah. I'm so sad that I don't have any more coffee to drink. So we need feasting in the mid-range, but we're looking at Harden, we're looking at Paul. Paul in particular, actually. And I don't think that this is the spot for Eric Gordon or Ryan Anderson. So Paul is at 83, so he needs 40 and change. Hasn't been there well, once in the last five. He's only played five games in the last two weeks. I'm in for some Chris Paul. Harden needs probably some sort of astronomical number. 11, 5, 55, 57. Yeah, that, that feels good. Who's going to guard him? Not Rodney Hood. <laughs> Take my chances. Um... Don't like the idea of Eric Gordon. Has there been any salary drops? That'd be interesting. Yeah, everybody, I guess. What's Paul down to? 83, okay. Capella, 75. That doesn't feel like a spot for me. Ariza. Ariza needs 25. Nah, that's probably it for me right there. So let's call that the short list, which is, you know, pretty damn long if you ask me for a four game slate. What's going to be really interesting is when all these guys that I'm about to optimize don't pop. Well, at least I've got guys at every position. That's usually helpful. So now, let's throw everybody in to the pool. Let's see who comes out on the other side. <clears throat> eh, 50 will be fine on a four game slate. And, go. Great. Lots of Jordan Clarkson, lots of Julius Randle, two guys I didn't look at at all. Jordan Clarkson. Down to 4,500. Okay, so that's something I might have overlooked. Yeah, I did. I did, just missed it. 4,500, so he needs 22 to hit value. He played 21 minutes in the last one, which is a little bit narrower than I'd like, and put up 3.7. Oh, yeah. That Jordan Clarkson for sure. Faux oh, show. Yeah. That's a no-brainer. Not a no-brainer in that like he's a lock for cash. It's a no-brainer that he should be looked at. I don't agree with the Randall love tonight in particular. I think the minutes are starting to get a little tricky. So as expected, it's Russ. I think it is Jordan Clarkson now. It might be Jordan Clarkson and Troy Daniels, which allows you to get to Embiid, but we'll see. Second point guard is Lonzo. I'd like to see how that shakes out. I, Paul George, what's the, what is the small forward 
status look like? Yeah, now there's... I can't... I think Paul George is in a good spot to be faded tonight. So he'll probably go ham. Power forward. Mello gets the 38. And there's not really anything there that I like otherwise. So let's just lock in Mello. And then we'll, we'll run this again. Makes Lonzo look incredibly tasty. I'm ignoring Paul George. This is going to make everything change. Yep, there it is. There's James Harden climbing the board. Yeah. So center is 50 50 on Embiid. Small forward. I think that I need to lock in Damari Carroll. And now I think that this will show me everything that I need. It's the Joel Embiid show. But it might also be the James Harden show. This might be Stars and Scrubs. I don't think I can get to Harden now. I like Harden more than Embiid. No. Troy Daniels coming out low, which surprises me. Porter, Carroll, Oubre, Crab. We had Ubre. Interesting. <coughs> it's going to be a weird one. So it seems like it's telling me I need to go Lonzo, Levert. No way I'm going Chris. I could probably go Kuzma here. That would be Lonzo. Huh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm not sure where the build is. But it seems like Russ and Embiid are the two, uh, the two big plays for me tonight. I think Harden will be a little bit more difficult, although, I could see a scenario where I go off of Embiid to Steven Adams to open up Harden, but I don't really like that Harden Jazz matchup. None of it matters. Lock is in 12 hours, and there's no telling what news is going to come out. So, with that said, if you like this video, I would appreciate a like. If you didn't like this video, I would also appreciate a like. But again, if you didn't like this video and you watched all 40 minutes of it, I'd be shocked. I'm going to assume that you quit and gave this a thumbs down 35 minutes ago. So anyway, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want. We just passed 800 subscribers. It is growing like a weed. And unfortunately, I've been playing like shit. So let's snap out of it. Projections are posted on the Google Sheet in the comments. They're also posted at the Reddit DFS board. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Check out a Patreon. That'd be cool. We, got a couple, we have a couple patrons now. Um, shout out to Ashiel for being my newest. And that's it. I will be back live before lock, 7 p.m. tonight for the late lock. I hope everyone had a good night last night. I hope everybody was able to stay on Zebo instead of Jason Tatum, unlike myself. And um, let's just get on the winning ways, man. I'm tired of losing. It's depressing as shit. That's it. Bye-bye.